On this album, we've been talking about a lot of issues, you know what I'm saying? Issues. But the root to all these issues, bottom line, is sin. It's sin. So on this track, we're gonna deal with that. Now in verse number one, I'ma explain what sin is. What it is. Verse number two, I'ma tell you what sin do. What it do. And verse number three, I'ma explain how to be dying to sin. How to defeat it. Let's go. Sin, for instance, is this. It's deception, deceiving. The criminal side of it, the, the guns, the drugs, the people, you know, when when it when it stoops to we're selling twelve year old and, and ten year old boys and girls for the sex trade and Right. And they're getting raped 120 times a day. I mean, that's reality, and mm. that's and that that's not. There's no God in that, you know. Right. And uh, except for Him trying to protect them, and I know He can, and He can make those changes. But when evil abounds, it's because good's doing nothing. You know mm. what I mean? That's powerful. And and that's where we are in the world. I I think you know, just awareness, awareness, awareness. Get it out there. And, and let people know that it's happening in their backyard, not just overseas. It's it's a real problem here, you know. And it's our high school daughters, and it, it's so simple. Now, how but, how would they re- recruit these kids? You know, Ray, as you know, the gangs are recruiting kids at eight years old, wow. and uh, eight nine year old kids are getting in the gangs, and and all it takes is a guy going up to a little high school girl or a junior high girl and saying, hey. You want to come out to a party with us, and she thinks she's going to a party, and next thing you know, they rape her, and they gang rape her, and then they put a knife to her throat and tell her if she says anything to anybody or tells anybody, they're going to kill her and her whole family, and next thing you know, little girl runs away, or they just keep her in the school. That's the saddest part. They can keep that girl in one location, and she's going to end up with a label of being a slut and a you know a whore and a tramp when that's not it at all. She's being forced into that, you right. know? And um, we don't even see it because we're not educated to see it. That's the problem. And then uh, from there, if they talk a kid into running away, you know, or if the kid says, I can't take it anymore, they run away. Or maybe they even get to feeling safe with the gang. They think, oh, well, this is a lie, but I'm accepted. I'm accepted for what I am, and I can hang out with these people, and they're going to protect me. And they get this, this weird sense of protection and love when it's nothing but abuse, you know. And... uh well, how do parents protect them, their kids from that? How do they? Uh, yeah, what would be your advice, you know? Because, like I said, this is running rampant. The first thing is start noticing who they're hanging out with, noticing what they're wearing, if their clothes change, you know, to where they start wearing more provocative stuff or they start wearing the same color. If their whole wardrobe turns into <laughs> the same color, that's a, that's a sign that they might be involved in a gang, you know? And... um you just got to be able to talk to your kids, you know, and have your kids feel like they can talk to you. I think that's the problem. I, I know when I was a kid, if if I had went to my mom and said, Mom, I'm going to be a one percenter boss one day, she would have fell on her face and started praying. But at the same time, it wouldn't have been a conversation we could have, you know. Right. But um, with Jesus, you can have that conversation. You can go to him and say, Lord, this is what I was going on in my life. I need your help. I'm putting it at the cross. Let's get it fixed because it's a relationship. And parents need to have a relationship with their youth, you know, to where they can come to them and say, Mom, Dad, here's what's going on. I'm scared. This is what's happening. I'm getting, you know, with the bullying in school now is such a big thing. And and the gang's a big thing. And now the human trafficking's involved. It just keeps getting worse, right? Uh, You know, but I think communication's the key, you know. Exactly. And were, were gangs like uh, yours, would they, would they target just a low income, uh, middle class? I mean, what, what's, who's at risk? Was, is all income class kids? Because a lot of people think, well, I moved out to the suburbs, so my kid's safe. Is no, that man, true? I had, uh, in my crew, we had surgeons, we had lawyers, I had a couple of judges. When our case went down a few months ago, we had 15 officers get locked up. These are police officers get locked up for being affiliated with us. Um, they were they were actually running guard for us while we're selling drugs and selling guns. I mean, it's it's amazing. And these wow. are the folks that we entrust and we pay taxes to make sure they protect our families and our cities, and they were working for me. Right. Now, with the sex trafficking, though, I mean, would kids from all income classes be targeted? Or would yeah. it just be kind of just a, the lower income? With the sex trade and human trafficking, it's a $32 billion a year industry. Um, 27 million kids are 
are slaves right now, you know, or people are in that slavery. It's not just sex slavery. It's 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 human labor. You know, they're they're using them to build products and and just do all kinds of stuff. There's a, a organization called A21 that's doing some great things, and the Polaris Project doing some great things. There, there's organizations out there, but I think uh, the one thing that some of them are sort of not putting an emphasis on is it's not. It's here. It's in the East Coast. It's in the West Coast. It's in the middle. Um, start doing your homework, you know, looking around and seeing as a parent and as a as a pastor and as a youth pastor and as a, a teacher and a principal. Start looking it up and so, start so, seeing it's here in the United States. So any neighborhood's at risk. doesn't matter uh, whether you're low income or high income. Your neighborhood's at risk. Uh, your kids are at risk to being uh, victims of sex trafficking. They are, and and I guess the real reason why, Ray, is this. If I go out and I sell a box truck full of guns, or I sell 50 keys of cocaine, and I get caught, I'm going to prison for a long time, right? Right. But if I get a girl, and I put her up in a hotel room, and I've got the room three doors down, and she knows if she leaves, I'm going to kill her, right? Right. right. And she's in there doing tricks all night, just for John, over and over and over. The cops come and bust her. They can't even identify what's really going on. So she goes to jail, and the gang walks away. We're free and clear. It's San Diego. It's Houston, Texas, and and it's not in the hood. I mean, these things are happening right there in middle class and upper class America. And uh, like I was saying before, the the average life expectancy for these kids is seven years, right? They're doping them up, getting them hooked on dope, and then mm. killing them when they've worn them out. And that breaks my heart. I can't, you know, that's the part I can't swallow and I can't sleep at night without doing something about it. Right. Now, do you find a lot of uh, satanic cults, you know, are, are customers of a lot of these uh, uh, sex traffickers, human traffickers, to, to use these kids for rituals? You know, it's uh, it's so open on the Internet. That's the thing. They can use Craigslist or or. Backpage or any of these things, they're just advertising the kids right there on the internet. You can hook up with them. And uh, if you watch, like Dateline NBC has that show Predators, you know, or To Catch a Predator, and right. you're seeing these guys going, and it, you know, it's the same thing. It's so any town USA, I guess, is the best way to say it. And and anybody can be um, a predator. I, I guess that's the best word for it. You know, anybody can be that guy. That's trying to buy your kid, and that's the sad part. Hmm. Yes, that's, that's too bad, right there. So, like I say, you said that you know, in order to safeguard uh, your kids from that, parents need to find out what's going on with their kids more than they're doing, and not use the uh, the music and the TV set as a babysitter. That's right. Get back to family. Get back to having dinner with each other, talking to each other. Get involved in sports with your kids. Get involved. Don't use any of that as a way to push your kid off, but instead get involved and show them you're proud of them and, and that you love them and accept them as they are. That's it. The key to this is pastors, youth pastors, teachers, principals, parents, all you guys just uh, you need to know where your kids are and you need to know where your youth are and what they're doing. Get involved in their life and get involved in a faith-based program um, and just Put Jesus as your center. That's without Him. Uh, I say it all the time that uh, His blood truly covers. And without it, none of us, you know, can even be here, and we're not worthy of it. But thank God He gave His life for us. And uh, that's it, man. Just be aware of your surroundings and know what's going on, and know what's going on in your community. There's pl plenty of program and opportunity for you to get out there and help and get involved. And uh, Ray and Junior and those guys are are great too. just reach out and Father, try to help them out and so what they're much. doing they're, they're doing a great yeah, job there's no name so, above your name hey appreciate it and god bless serve any other you too name. ray thank you so much yeah sure Mashiach. there's power in the name of jesus there's power in the name of jesus
Bless your name. Yeshua. Yeshua. We bless, we bless your name.